Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on forces and motion today's lesson will be about the third law of motion by Sir Isaac Newton. Let's imagine you're playing football and at some point you hit the ball. When you hit something that means you're applying a push Therefore, it means you're applying a force. Now, what is important from the point of view of a third law, that every time you push or pull something, every time you apply a force on an object, the same object will apply a force in you. And not any force, a force which is equal in magnitude, but in the opposite direction. Very simply, you can say that you cannot touch without being touched in turn. And this applies to any, any kind of force you can apply or can, that an object can apply on another object. Every time there is a force, there is an equal but opposite force on another object. And this is the reason why in, um, call it in university physics, we prefer not to use the term forces, but interactions. This is to uh, remember that forces don't come out of the blue, they don't are, they're not isolated things, but they always come in pairs. If I apply a force on something, that something in turn will apply the same force, but in the opposite direction to me. So let's see the formulation, a way to formulate the third law of motion. If object A exerts, that means applies, a force on object B, then object B will exert an equal but opposite force on object A. So what does it mean, equal and opposite? It means we'll have the same magnitude. For instance, 10 newtons, 10 newtons. 50 newtons, 50 newtons. So the same amount of force, but in opposite directions. There's a more familiar way of stating the third law of Newton, and that is the following. To every action, there is, corresponds, an equal but opposite reaction. There's a nice consequence of that law. Again, I told you, you can't touch without being touched. So imagine you're floating in space, uh, so that's you in a spacesuit, and there's an asteroid, uh, there's a big rock that you want to move. And normally what you will do, you'll push it. Now mind you, in deep space you might not have weight, but you still have mass. The matter is still there, the amount of matter in the asteroid is still there, regardless of gravity. And from the point of view of moving something, what matters is the mass, not the weight. So it will be still difficult to move this thing in space. Actually, what happens, you apply a force to the asteroid, but the asteroid has a large mass. And by applying the second law of motion, that will result in a very small acceleration, actually will move very little. On the other hand, by means of a third law, the same force will be, will be applied on you. But you have a much smaller mass than the asteroid. And by the second law, that means it will result in a much larger acceleration. What does that mean? It means that if you want to push an asteroid away, what will happen in reality that you are going to be pushed away yourself.
One of the most famous applications of the third law is rocket science. We refer to rocket science every time we want to say something very difficult, but in this specific case, it's a very simple application. So let's imagine a rocket. Uh, sometimes, some types of rockets, they're fueled by two types of, of fuel that then got mixed together. You have liquid hydrogen in tank number one, and you have liquid oxygen in tank number two, and you mix them in a combustion chamber. So what happens, these two gases actually, they got mixed together, and they make an, a strongly exothermic reaction, and all the exhaust gases are pushed downwards through the nozzle, here. But what happens? By means of the third law, since you're pushing something away, the same gases are pushing the rocket in the opposite direction. And the nice thing of this kind of engine, it works regardless of where you are. Other types of engine, they need air, to move an object through, or you need the ground to provide you with some friction in order to move, but the rocket, by using the third law, can move even in vacuum, so even in deep space. So, what was the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how forces always come in pairs. This is why we call them interactions rather than forces. In our next lesson, we will be dealing with one of the consequences of the second law, that is friction and braking. And our very last lesson will be actually a new unit called forces and pressure and will be about turning forces.